What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman. Now some of you may have seen the headline breaking late last night that Marvel Studios has in fact canceled production on Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye TV series set to head to Disney Plus late next year, leaving the entire franchise indefinitely in question. What's more, coming just days after Doctor Strange 2 lost its director, spurring a lot of questions as to what's going on at Marvel Studios regarding Phase 4. And while it didn't take long to trace this story to the source, there's still a ton of speculation and erroneous reporting regarding why Marvel Studios would choose to do this in the first place. We're going to break down the story, what people are saying, and what the most likely case scenario is for why Marvel Studios would choose to move this. And it's actually got nothing to do with allegations, but rather the Young Avengers. Like I said, we're going to break the whole thing down. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff, including a limited edition Infinity Saga box box set, all you have to do to be entered to win hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video and if you want, stick around at the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. So the initial report actually came from industry insider Charles Murphy reporting late last night that there'd been a total reshuffling of the production schedule for Marvel Phase 4 Disney Plus TV series, what's more, where Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye TV series had set to shoot at the end of this year or the beginning of next to make its debut in late 2021, it had actually been moved to the bottom of the pile, and the newly announced Moon Knight, She-Hulk, and Miss Marvel TV series had not only begun casting, but would actually end up shooting and be released before the Hawkeye series. And while that was the total extent and scope of the report with no concrete reason or speculation offered by Murphy simply reporting the facts as he had learned them, it didn't stop everybody from immediately speculating that this must have something to do with the allegations levied by Renner's ex-wife and the turmoil created by the custody battle surrounding his most recent divorce and then it didn't take long from some of these lesser news sites to twist that speculation into a headline that this had something to do with Jeremy Renner when in truth that's just speculation at best and in actuality there doesn't need to be any real negative connotation when it comes to changing a production schedule for a major movie studio especially something like 12 to 24 months in advance look it's a privilege that Marvel Studios even decides to do huge announcements like San Diego Comic-Con and D23 to tell us what's coming two and three years down the road. And if we had to hold them to that exact schedule every single time, then they wouldn't be allowed to narrate these huge crossover stories and move some of the pieces as they need to make sense of this huge ensemble of characters. And while I agree, usually delays, especially in Hollywood, are never good when you're juggling this many projects and this many characters that have to work together, there's bound to be changes and look, it works both ways. We were expecting to get WandaVision in 2021 as well, and as it turns out, we're actually going to get that show six months earlier. They're doing the best they can with this many projects in really what's totally uncharted waters as far as the TV series are concerned for even their robust production schedule, and that's why it's super unfair to jump to conclusions and solely attribute them pushing back a show indefinitely or canceling the production indefinitely if that's how you want to look at it, just because the lead actor happens to be in the middle of an ugly divorce. And while it is worth pointing out that there's something mutually beneficial in the show's putback, putting more time between the allegations in the show's release and ultimately giving Renner a chance to possibly focus on and resolve the dispute. That's not the reason Marvel is pushing it back solely and that's the only point that Jeremy Conrad MCU Cosmic was trying to make. Unfortunately, some of these news sites took his words and twisted them to include that headline, it must be Renner's fault, when absolutely it's not and anyone who says so is overlooking a major news story that's been in the trades for about three months, something we haven't really focused on here at the channel but could ultimately be the reason they have to push this show back and it has everything to do with Kate Bishop and little to do with Hawkeye. Well of course the show is named after Hawkeye and he's super important and integral to the story's arc. It focuses on him teaching and passing the mantle to Kate Bishop, a prominent member of the Young Avengers, a team that's all but confirmed for Marvel Phase 5 considering we'll see the first two members during WandaVision in Wiccan and Speed. And if this show is confirmed to be setting up Kate Bishop as 
as the synopsis would imply, as well as the intro credits and graphics already show her in them prominently, then it's going to be kind of hard to do this show if you don't have a Kate Bishop cast. And that's been the report for the better part of three months that Marvel Studios is pretty intent on having Haley Steinfeld take the role. But unfortunately, as of the last report, they were unable to lock her down either from lack of interest or a scheduling conflict and if the scheduling conflict was the true reason why she was unable to accept the role the marvel studios could have simply turned around and decided to change the production schedule on the hawkeye television show to better suit Haley steinfeld's schedule now of course that's going to present problems going forward if they need these actors for the kind of commitment that they've needed them for in the past if you can't even get on the schedule for the very first movie then what are you going to do when they need you around the clock for two years in the next decade to shoot the two parts of Secret Wars. It begs a lot of questions, but this is why Kevin Feige recently said they still get turned down all the time by big actors who just don't want to commit to this string of projects and want to have some diversity in their career. Either way, the last piece of speculation surrounding this report is that Marvel Studios may be doing sweeping changes to whatever their big crossover event is or rewriting the narrative arc for the next couple of phases, meaning that the Hawkeye television show isn't that important or the changes they're making to the Doctor Strange movie have something to do with why the show won't make sense in the end of 2021. Either way, you should keep in mind that Marvel Studios has been working on contingency plans for the better part of all of Phase 2 and Phase 3. They had a different Civil War in mind if they weren't able to lock down Spider-Man. They were literally shooting that movie, trying to negotiate the deal from Sony to get Spider-Man in the movie, and had a contingency plan for what they would do with the final version while they were shooting it they didn't get him and as crazy as that sounds that's frail in comparison to the sort of audible they had to run when they had to fire James Gunn and basically rewrite and redo the entire kickoff infrastructure for Marvel Phase 4 as evidenced by the end of Avengers Endgame Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was set to not only kick off Phase 4 and be the first movie we see but introduce a ton of integral elements to the Marvel cosmic side of the universe including Adam Warlock and as it turns out James Gunn has been very public recently in saying that this actually worked out better. He likes the story that they're going to be able to tell with the narrative where it is. And that's where you have to give the MCU, Kevin Feige, and the rest of the brass over there the benefit of the doubt. If they don't have a contingency plan, they'll come up with one. And just because we're hearing about all of these cancellations and what's perceived problems over at Marvel Studios doesn't mean that they haven't been dealing with this stuff the entire time. It's just that it hasn't been as mainstream news in the past where people are as interested with the goings on over behind the scenes at Marvel Studios. Remember, they lost Edgar Wright pretty far down the track with Ant-Man and it turned out to be a great film and in the context of the MCU and that's because Kevin Feige has such a clear idea of what he wants and needs in the MCU and it's not that Edgar Wright couldn't have done a great Ant-Man film and probably one that Kevin Feige would like, it's just that he needs these films to work together in a specific way. That's why he parted ways with Scott Derrick in on Doctor Strange 2 and that's probably why they've decided to move this Hawkeye show because they need things to work together in a specific way and if they don't Kevin Feige's never been afraid to make the changes needed in order for them to do so and that's why a you got to give him the benefit of the doubt but b remember that this is normal these aren't hiccups or a new mess over at Marvel Studios rather than making the hard decisions to give us the quality that we've come to expect from their productions guys let me know what you think in the comments about all of this a do you agree with my point of view that this is nothing new for Marvel Studios, just more of the same and them keeping up with the same stuff they've done before? And B, does this disappoint you at all about the show being postponed? Was this one of the shows that you were actually hyped for? And do you agree with me that this probably has more to do with them not having a Kate Bishop yet than the allegations that are sitting against Renner, especially considering those are so old at this point, actually the end of last year and have not been in the news at all? Let me know what you think in the comments about all of this and quickly let's get into the giveaway stuff stuff before we let you go. We're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 600,000 subscriber mark. All you have to do to be entered to win hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell with notifications turned on, leave a like and a comment on this video, and because it's truly random, the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. That also automatically enters you to win all the rest of the prizes here at the channel, like the limited edition Infinity Saga box set. We just gave one away on New Year's Eve Eve, we'll be giving away the other one one on a special anniversary here for the channel. If you want to be entered to win that as well, all the same rules apply. Hit the subscribe button, 
Then hit the notification bell, notifications turned on, leave a like and a comment on the video, and again, because it's truly random, the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners are announced at the end of videos, and if you've missed any of the previous winners, all you have to do is scroll back through the channel, you'll see all of the titles replicate when winners were announced. Simply click on them and scroll to the end, you'll hear the winners announced there. My name's Michael Roman, this is Everything Always. Guys, I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for helping me build what is one of the fastest fan-growing communities for Marvel on any platform, let alone YouTube. It's insanely awesome, I cannot thank you enough. My name's Michael Roman, this is everything always. Guys, thanks for checking out the channel and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.